Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman Raw. So today we've got the masking stage on this Opal Insignia. So yeah, pretty straightforward job. We're just painting the two doors and the rear quarter panel. So yeah, I mean, lots of people get a lot out of my masking videos. So I'll do my best to keep you guys interested. I'll be talking a bit of shit <laughs> along the journey and um, yeah, masking this car up. So. It's one of those things that I do get people asking me to do like a, a short in-depth video like on my main channel about it. Now I do have a few on masking on my main channel but I find um, it's a little bit difficult to like include everything that you need to include in a five minute video so you may even be best off just watching me in a longer video and um, talking a little bit of shit in the meantime. So, here we go. So obviously here we've got a, a body line there that I'm just sort of doing a bit of a false edge right up here. Not gonna be, well that edge has flipped up. Do away with that. This is actually another little handy thing I do sometimes. When doing panels like this, sometimes you can like get a little bit of paint coming through and it can actually end up coming out these gaps um, and you'll end up with a bit of misty overspray on it. So um, sometimes when I'm masking up headlights, let's just say if I was painting this fender and masking the headlight up, I'd probably put a piece of tape down there and down here just to stop it from coming back out. Let's just, let's do a proper false edge in there. I'm not going to get much paint up in there, so like the masking doesn't have to be 100%. Um, I'm really just going to get the tiniest um, bit of overspray out there. I haven't been making many raw videos lately, I don't know why, I just sort of haven't been in the mood. Just getting in and smashing them out, haven't been turning the camera on, but I felt like it today. It's a pretty st nice straightforward job as well. So things like this, you can do a bit of a false edge there if you like, but I've found a lot of the time all you really need to do is just back mask and then just peel it back a little bit before you um before you shut the panel. Because what can happen is like sometimes that'll go a little bit too far and as long as you're sort of taking it back there before you shut it, it'll go back there easily enough. Yeah, it's one of those things like when I started making YouTube videos, I obviously didn't have much experience or any experience in it, so um, I, I didn't want to waste people's time. I know that when I was, um, or at any time I was looking on YouTube, I just want to get straight to the point. So my earlier videos, they were pretty much all under 10 minutes. So um, then I slowly started getting a bit of feedback from you guys and I said don't worry about the length You know if we're learning something it doesn't matter how long it takes um, You know and I guess you're only by the time you're watching a YouTube video these days It's more of like an entertainment thing like you just sit down Overnight rather than watching TV and you'll sit down and watch YouTube videos. Um Yeah, the, the way times have changed I guess um, so always mask your rear door first you have to do that or else you won't be able to mask these front edges of the um, rear door properly if you mask the front door and then shut it. Now I have to paint the sill panel on this car because it's all connected to that quarter panel. So I'll just leave that rubber on, I'm happy with that and I'll get this tape right up underneath there and that should be fine. It's also going to serve as um, yeah, a little bit of, I guess, the rubber to stop any other overspray. So that's all I'll need because that will seal up onto here, if you know what I mean. Um, whereas if that rubber wasn't there, I'd probably want to put a bit of paper up in there just to stop any from coming any further up. All I do with these upper sections 99% of the time, so if you want to clean it first, there might be a little bit of dust left over from your prep stage. Usually a bit of the finger action works. And then just back mask it, and exactly what we did on that bootleg, just pull it back a little bit before you do shut the panel, just to make sure it's not gonna go, on, go down too far. Sometimes you do have to get a bit of thinners or prep sole 
up here because people will use like armor roll on their rubbers and it'll get all greasy but yeah this is clean free of contaminants like that which is good European vehicles seem to be the worst for that all right now we've got to find out where that door stops are and I just about nailed that man nearly I can just peel that back just a little bit and that's right about where the door stops so from there down we will do a bit of false edging this is another one I get asked about I actually did a dedicated video to doing this false edging once all you do is just flip it over and then have the leading edge that's flipping on that side of your knee and then just pull it out it's, it takes a little bit of getting used to but once you get it you can just roll run bits of um, false edge off in no time there are actually machines that do that for you when I started doing false edges it wasn't actually until I was like fourth year or yeah around that stage of my apprenticeship because I moved shops and everyone was doing it. I'm like, wow, that's cool. They actually had a, um, I think it was like Easy Edge or something like that. Either way, it was really handy. It was, yeah, I didn't quite know how to make them myself yet, but someone taught me and yeah, it's actually quite easy. Yeah, I still remember the first time, like, someone showed me that. He said, oh, he was painting a van and there was like a little square thing like where a window would have gone on a van um, but it was panelled out and it was all painted and he's like oh I'll just paint around that and I'm like nah man you'll get a masking edge no way like I couldn't believe it and when he painted I'm like man there's like no edge at all you know or very minimal something that you just um polish up in in no time you know so yeah you just get that nice and you see like the paint's just gonna want to flow up under there they get a little bit in there not too much And this is why I don't like using non-sanding primers or what they call in America sealers. Um, I think a lot of the guys over there in the US would just, they'd look at this job and they'd put sealer over their primer or non-sanding primer over their sandable primer. I prefer to get that primer nice, dry it out, sand it out. And as you can see here, there was a couple of spots that I did cut through and I put a bit of one-shot primer on there. There's a bit of UV primer here and there's a little bit of 1K primer there, etch primer. Um, I'd rather do that and get the prep on point than um, have to rely on the non-sanding primer and the reason I brought that up is because what can happen is um, you'll get that non-sanding primer creeping through here a little bit but then the silver won't follow it and you'll be left with like an edge in there. Um, I have heard some people say they've got like little methods where they run a piece of tape down here between the gap but then I can still imagine that building up on that tape edge and then even after you're painting it, you'll see some sort of an edge, especially on a silver, so, yeah. At the end of the day, do what works for you, but um, that's just the way I do it. And yeah, like the Standox Solvents color, colors usually cover pretty well. Sometimes you do get silvers like this that don't cover that well, but um, you've always got the options of using like a ground coat, so you don't, you don't need to always rely on that wet on wet primer for a ground coat so inside this door jam here i'm just masking off that sealer line as you can see here so there's not going to be any hard edge in there that, that is visible because it's right on that sealer line i usually run two strips of this tape in there again there's a few other ways you can do it like you can put a little bit of paper in there or whatever but i don't know i just find it pretty easy to smash a couple of bits of tape in there this is 36 mil masking tape 3m 150 is the um is the number of the product code 150 and yeah the brand is 3m pretty cool color i like the color Like I used to spend all this time masking all of these down like that and then I'd use that false edging the whole way around here and then I'd double up the, the masking tape as well but it just takes forever. And as I say, this is all you really need to do on your door jams. It saves a lot of time 
on the upper door jams and stuff like that. There's nothing wrong with a bit of back masking as long as you don't load your paint up under there, you know. Um, yeah, if you just go and pump heaps of clear coat up there, obviously it's going to build up, but it will build up no matter how you mask it at the end of the day. Even if you did spend all that time um, taping the rubbers down and using your false edge masking, it would still build up there, so. Yes, I've uh, refined my methods over the years to come up with something that I think is pretty good. I um, stand by my methods, you know. It's not going to be the same as everyone, but mine work for me. That's the main thing, I guess. Oh, that's right. These doors are a prick to open from the outside, so I snipped them in. I locked them in. Make sure these bits don't get caught up underneath that rubber. And then all we need to do here is just tape that down. As I said, like, we've already pulled part of that down and yeah, all right, all right to continue on here. So you might even notice that the primer color has changed a little bit from previous videos. We were using the Challenger primer, like, it's not great, <laughs> you know, it did the job and I just got to the point where I noticed a few defects and I put it down to the primer. The other guys weren't sure if it was the primer or they thought it was the body filler because it was like cracking up, but I was sure that it was the, um, the primer. Too much primer getting loaded on too quick, so I just thought, you know what, we'll change the primer and see if it um, fixes it. And I'll tell you what, um, this primer is heaps better. Uh, even if it wasn't the issue, I want to continue using this primer. It's um, the Cyrox brand, so it's another Axalta company uh, parent brand. Um, but yeah, Cyrox is the brand and it's, it's great. Like proper high solid primer. Previous one that we were using was um, just the MS, I'm pretty sure. I've found MS products don't usually make a big deal that they are MS, but <laughs> the HS ones do, so. Yeah, that old primer didn't actually say it was MS and I never bothered breathing the tech data. But yeah, it was an MS primer. So again, it's a bit of tape down the bottom here right on that sealer line. I usually find one's enough for right up under, there, under here. And then where you got that little bit of sealer there that's wiped in, I'll do like a little bit of a false edge there, just so that you don't get a hard edge there, because the sealer isn't, doesn't have a sharp line to it. So it's Thursday afternoon and after this one we've only got one job, one more job to paint for the week that's meant to be going this week. So yeah, we're getting ahead, which is good. Having lunch tomorrow, the boss puts on a lunch at the end of each month, last Friday of each month. That's always good, that's what we've got to look forward to tomorrow, so like pizza, KFC, something like that. All right, and then I like to put a piece of paper down the front of the back door. All right, where were we before I was rudely interrupted by my fellow painter? That's right, we're masking this job up. So yeah, always get a bit of tape over this rubber here before you shut this door to. Probably struggle to get that one masked otherwise. And sometimes I'll do a bit of this action just to help keep a bit of overspray out of that door jam there. Something like this, you know. Obviously you gotta be a bit careful when you do unmask that you don't go and scratch the front of that fresh door edge where you've just painted 
In this case, this job is going to be staying in here overnight. I'll, I'll spray it tonight and um, unmask it in the morning, so it should be nicely cured anyway. So yeah, a bit of that, and then we'll do a bit of back masking here. Poor old Alan's out the back there polishing all our jobs for us. <laughs> Detailer for life, mate. Detailers. Don't mess with the detailers. Alright, so what have we got? A little bit of something down there too. This um this sill panel's all been sprayed before. I've got a feeling this entire side has been done before. Uh, I went to unmask some of the masking that we put on for primer stage and it peeled off some of the paint on the sill panel. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's good. I think that's about right to shut there now. Yep, all looking pretty damn good. Yeah, look, I've found nine times out of ten, I don't even have to hand polish up under here. There is that little of an edge that it doesn't even need a polish. guy trying to like I, I did a video on um, how to spray over chrome ages ago when I had my own workshop and the only way I would ever be able to um, think to get any paint to stick to chrome even just for a short amount of time would be to use epoxy and he's trying to tell me oh man you can't use epoxy but, um, what are you talking about man <laughs> he's like you need to do some research and well uh, anything to do with epoxy primers I've always associated it with restoration work um, so I asked my mate Gator ne uh, Jose from Gator Negro Body Shop and I'm like um, you know, would you use epoxy primers he's like yeah man all the time you know because he he's got his awesome resto shop over there in the Netherlands and he's like yeah man like that's that's stuff he's going to stick to anything and you got your rust inhibit inhibitors inside it as well so um, yeah basically this other guy just doesn't know what he's on about when I do my Tirana up if I ever get around to doing it it's going to be a few years down the track now but yeah I'm going to um, epoxy that maybe sandblast it I don't know maybe even just paint strip it or something sandblasting can get a little bit on the messy side and just end up with like little grains of sand all through your car Again, I'll, I'll be uh, consulting my mate Jose from Ghetto Negro. Say, hey, how often do you sandblast them? And would you recommend that? Or is there, you know, you got, I think they've got soda blasting and other methods and that. I mean, bead blasting is basically the same as sandblasting. I did this old, um, I think it was a Hudson Straight Six or something like that, or a Hudson Terraplane, like an old American. Um, it was like 30s or something, 30s or 40s, one of those really old school cars, like cool car, but yeah, like that got bead blasted and man, I was hours and hours and hours cleaning those beads out. And then when I went to spray it, like I was painting down here and just maybe a different pressure and then just beads coming out into the paint job. That job actually came out really good. I was really happy with it, it was like, um, sort of a, British racing green, like a dark green, and then did all those big flares, wheel flares, guards or whatever you want to call them. Um, they were done black, so it was all two-tone and 
yeah, it's awesome. I do enjoy doing the resto work, but doing it for a living, man, it's, I don't know, it's just people want, they expect um, miracles done really cheap, you know? I think we got caught into quoting maybe too low and, you know, you, you get people want full resprays and you, you charge them 10 grand and it's like, man, it's just not worth it. Busting your balls on these jobs for peanuts, you know? One of those things if I ever do get back into it, you know, like it'll be starting price for a standard respray will be like twenty thousand dollars, you know. And it's all justifiable. Like when you put the hours into it and even just the materials that go into it, you're like on the cheap you could probably go twenty uh oh, sorry, two thousand dollars worth of materials for a respray these days. You know, you you're talking like if you want to get like a glazer at HS clear kit. You know, seven or eight hundred dollars. <laughs> Give or take, you know. That's just for your clear coat, not to mention all the other stuff that you need to get the job done. That's before I even lift a, <laughs> lift a finger on it as far as labour goes, you know. I guess maybe I'm too kind, mate. I, um myself in the position of a, the owner and I'm like yeah I'll try to keep the prices down for you but some of those jobs I'd sit back at the end of it roughly calculate my hours and I'm like man I was working for like 15 or 20 dollars an hour <laughs> can make that kind of money you know working at, at Burger King or something like that <laughs> Which is something I've actually never done my entire life. I've never done retail or any any of those kind of jobs. Always been pretty hands-on. My first job was at Ultra Steel in Bendigo. It was like a steel fabrications joint. And cleaning up, oh it was dirty ass man, <laughs> I got some photos, I think I, I think I put them on my website actually, I did, go over to my website, check them out, government.net.au, I think it's at the, in the about page, there's a photo of me um, at my first job, and I did a big page there, a bit of a write up about, you know, myself, and yeah I started off in ultra steel and we were just cleaning up these big H beams of steel, just had rust all over them and then um, had to put them into a chicken farm. They were going into a chicken farm so we actually went out on site and installed them. These big H beams of steel and I was up the top there tightening them up by finger. I'm <laughs> loving it on the crane, you know. That was when most kids were enjoying their after school holidays, I'd finished year 10 and um, sitting around at a friend's place one night and his mum said, hey, does anyone want a, a holiday job? I said, yep, yep, me, 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 please. And yeah, it was ultra steel, and a steel fab joint. I was like freezing cold Bendigo mornings, jumping on the push bike at like 5.30 in the morning. I used to have to get there, it was still dark. So good. Bit of back masking down the bottom here, just so we don't go and get overspray all underneath the undercarriage of the owner's car. When I did the prep work on this one too, I had the entire car covered up, and because I had to open the doors up, I covered the door jams up with a bit of plastic to keep the dust out of the interior it's one of those things it's like you see people not doing it, it's like come on man if that was your car would you really be doing that you know the answer is probably yes because some people just don't care 
Don't be that guy. Don't be the guy that doesn't care. All right, so we're ready for some plastic. Uh, I reckon we're gonna run out here. One, two, three. Nah, just enough. Yeah, I've found for a standard car, like your normal sedan, three full arm lengths gets over it. Three, oh, three and a half usually, yeah. There goes our masking. You get back down. So I like to do a bit of this. Just um, grab each end, tighten it up. Get a tape around there. I think, um, yeah, it's officially winter in two days from today here in Australia at least. Although I'm still running around with my singlet on half the day. It's about 23 Celsius. So what's that, around 70 degrees ambient temperature today. 70 Fahrenheit. Gotta love them Colad blades, very handy tool. I still get a fair few questions about these blades, like where you get them, and um, if you're wondering where I get them, you can check the link in all of my recent videos on my main channel. So, I can't remember if I put them in this channel, but yeah, all the videos on my main channel has a link to where to get these blades from. Oh, this one here, this has been going for like two months. <laughs> one thing that does sometimes happen is um, you get like just here where it hits into the plastic, it'll just jump up a little bit. So as you can see there, I'll just put that bit of tape over there just so it um, kicks the plastic up onto the blade. And it seems to work. I don't recall it. them used to do that, but recently in the last couple of batches I've had, it's been doing that a little bit, so. It's one of those things, when you use them every day, they don't seem to rust, but if I was to leave that for a few weeks, just sitting out in the workshop without using it, they do start rusting up, so. If you don't do your masking as often as me, either just get a couple for backups or, um, you could alternately just put a bit of oil over them while you're not using them. If you did just say get one, do your masking job, and then um, plan on leaving it for a few months, just put a little bit, I wouldn't put too much there. And then you'd obviously want to clean all that oil off before you do start your next masking job, like a bit of Prepsol or Sinus or something, because you don't want that oil, you know, all over the panel that you're masking. But yeah, when you do get new ones of these, they um they do come lightly oiled on the blade to stop them from rusting. Yes, I do enjoy masking. I like it. I don't know, I find it quite relaxing and simple. As I say, like I can probably come up with um, a better narration 
of my masking when I'm actually doing it rather than getting the footage and then sitting at home because honestly it is really hard for me to narrate. It's like well I'm putting pieces of tape down and I'm cutting out plastic. What else can I say? <laughs> Whereas throughout this video you might have picked something up through some of the explanations I gave as I was doing it. I can just go down there for now. Yeah. What's this guy doing? Trying to get his fender down. So we've got a killer spray gun giveaway coming up soon on the main channel. It's um, again powered by Spray Guns Direct, so thank you to you guys. They were the ones that even had the idea. And it's going to be two Pro Light Camo Editions, one SADA Limited Edition Morgan. You guys, SADA guys, will probably know what that is. Um, and then the and I started Water Supernova Lotus Edition. The same as the one that I have. So yeah, that's that's awesome. Four, you know, flagship spray guns given away. Just as um, a way to, you know, appreciate the fact that you guys uh, follow me. And well, I guess it's from Spray Guns Direct anyway, but I've always kind of done giveaways on the channel even from the early days when I was purchasing all my own guns um, and that's that's my advice like someone starting a YouTube channel don't don't start it up thinking that you're gonna get all these freebies and when I started I never expected to get all these freebies you know um, hey it's great and I'm not gonna knock it back but also don't um, don't just sell out to the company that's sending you things like I had a bit of an altercation with a certain company I guess there's no real reason to name them but um, they sent out a product and if I was to be fully honest to myself I actually think that I was being too kind on it because I felt obliged to you know like um, it's like a bit of uh, common courtesy it's like if someone has ever given me something even if you don't like it you'll usually be like oh thanks <laughs> you know I'm sure you all know that one like you get something for Christmas oh thanks ma'am I really wanted some new socks <laughs> um, but yeah that's kind of how I felt and my true opinion on the thing was actually yeah no it's, it's kind of a useless tool that I would never use and you know I, I tried getting that across in the video and they actually got angry at me that I didn't paint it in a positive enough light and it's like hold on man I pulled him up I'm like dude I never contacted you to start off with and I did tell you from the start this is for purpose of review I'm not doing an advertisement you know an advertisement if you were <laughs> trying to send something out for me to advertise you would have had to have paid me man and I've never been in the business of advertising I've been in the business of uh, reviewing, you know. So, um, yeah, I learned a lesson off that. And then when the Spray Guns Direct did come across, I was pretty um, firm with them at the start. I said, look, I can tell you now, you know, I'm not here to advertise, I'm here to review. So you, you're welcome to send things out for me to review. Um, but if I don't like them, I'm telling, you know, I'm telling people that I don't like them. And they said, look, that works fine for us, totally fine, because 
you know, they're not like, they don't make any of the stuff that they sell. Uh, except for I think they might have, uh, even, even the quartz they don't make, but that's their own brand, you know, so, um, you know, they also want feedback, you know, let's just say they've got um, a new spray gun in the works. Um, and they actually have done this before, like a new spray gun, possibility that they can get it, you know, and, and they'll send one of them out to me first to trial, to say, hey, is this gun even worth getting in? You know what I mean? So, um, they actually want the re honest review as much as you guys do. So, yeah, it's, it's a good partnership that seems to work. And as far as the channel's concerned as well, it's been, um, you know, it's added like a lot of good con content um, to the channel, I believe, as well, you know. Things that I just wouldn't have purchased because um, I couldn't justify it, you know. Um, they've managed, they've been able to send out for me to, to review um, and, yeah, got some good content onto the channel as a result. All right, so we've got a piece of paper down there. We're just about done. Gives me about an hour to spray it, heaps of time. So I always do like a final check over, make sure all the edges are stuck down, that you didn't miss anything. I've obviously got to do that fuel flap. I've got to put a couple of bits of foam tape in where those door handles go. Um, I'll do that off cam because we're starting to run out of time. Right, let's do this quickly. Just run a piece of tape around here and that's about it. Yeah, just want to make sure I've got enough uh, room left on the SD card to get the spray painting stage. I think I had an hour left when I started recording this. Yeah, look, I, I never get too fussy if I get like a little bit there that gets a bit of overspray on it because it is just a rubber inside here so um, it usually does clean off really easily especially if you get onto it early enough because that's one of those things man the tape never really wants to stick to the rubber anyway um, but obviously I did give it a bit of a clean with Prepsol before I started masking the job just to help improve my chances of getting it to stick. Radio, I'll flick that cam off and um, I'll see you in the next one. Hope you enjoyed watching. That's it, as I said, I'll put some foam tape inside these handles and then we'll get into the spray painting stage in the next video. Thanks for watching, coming out. Get out there and paint some, oh, get out there and mask some shit. <laughs>